We're like the three musketeers. There you go. Guten Tag, Abend. Thanks. Ah, so has everybody recovered from KubeCon? <laughs> I guess I'm still sleepy. Yeah, me and uh, Ricardo had to wake up like five in the morning those three days, two days. Oh yeah, I, I had to work late and oh yeah, uh, starting early anyways because of the company. So <laughs> very long days for the whole week. But your talk was very nice. I enjoyed. Thanks. Yeah. Took a lot of preparation, actually. And if you, I don't know if you've noticed, I haven't said really much about facts in it. So it's really just general gibberish, but yeah. Are the, uh, are the YouTube links out? I still haven't checked. I'm still on vacation, technically. I don't know. I just the links that we put up there on our website still work, so I just kept them. They haven't that removed. was interesting. Um, the access to the Google Drive was blocked. Uh, I think a week before KubeCon. I wanted to still have a look at the other pre-recorded videos, but I couldn't. Um, I don't know. The, I think CNCF like changed their website completely. I think today went out and and I noticed the link to the public events calendar was broken, so I had to ask for a yep. new one. But um, yeah, I don't know what else changed or where anything is. But the nice thing is, like under projects, you can go to all of the uh, sandbox projects, and you'll see us there. Just we don't have a logo yet. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, just check the um, playlist isn't out yet. Only the sponsored videos. I guess we can wait for a couple more minutes see if anybody else is gonna be here. If not, we'll just go through the agenda and make it a yep. short one. Oh, thanks for editing. No problem. There's also, I did send out uh kind of like to follow the governance thing that i pushed kind of an email to the maintainers list manuel for adding ricardo as a maintainer and i think it, just to kind of go by it yeah, i don't know yeah sure so that's all for you to kind of look at I am. Um... Hello. I will hey, make, we'll wait a couple more minutes if that's okay, and I'll get started. Okay. Hey, Tihamir, how are you? All right. So, Manuel, uh, should I share the screen and we can go from there, or how you want to do this? Yep. All right, I'll see if I can press the share screen button here. <laughs> All right, go. All right, you guys see the screen? Yeah. Yep, I can see it. All right, great. I just wanted, before we get started, uh, just to show, uh, Doug was a little bit, he was like, why am I the default assigning for all the PRs? So hopefully there's a PR here that, that he just merged, I did a PR, he merged it regarding changing the code owners file. So uh, it's still just code owners. I think on a PR, it just puts the default, GitHub puts the default assignees. Um, so 
just to show we're not removing Doug from anything. It's just the, he's kind of like, hey, why am I on all your PRs? Which is fine. But anyways, welcome, guys. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed KubeCon if you were attending. Um, wait. Oh, Manuel already updated everybody. It's great. So uh, we lost Ian, but uh, Kay, uh, since it's your first time, uh, is it your first time? It, it is, yeah. 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 Uh, do you want to be associated with any company? Oh, yeah. So uh, I've been on the contributor list. I'm with the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Maybe he oh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, so Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Oracle. Oracle. Oh, Oracle. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no worries. Small company, it's not. Really <laughs> <laughs> and Ian will come back, maybe. All right, so I guess community question time. Do you guys have any questions? Anything is cool. Nope. All right. Uh, so as far as the logo goes, we're still waiting on CNCF recommendations. So, Kay, I think you've commented on the great logos we got before. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I put like an online logo generator last week and I, I saw some recommendations, right? Some designs that look good, I can suggest, but I imagine those are probably copyrighted and whatnot. And we'll probably need to have like somebody from CNCF uh, take a look at some like designs. Yeah. Uh, if you want, I can send those over some that looked really neat to me. Awesome. Yeah, that would be great because uh, CNCF does have for projects. And now that we're sandbox projects, we, uh, there is an issue tracker and I open up an issue and it's mm -hmm. like waiting for the design team. Um, so it's probably they're all busy because of KubeCon last week, so or whenever. But if it. it comes back, I will just link it to us on, on our uh, Slack channel to look at, and then we can <laughs> talk about, about it. Good. But apparently, this all came about not from me, just letting you guys know. This came out once we uh, became Sandbox. Uh, actually, Chris Azimchuk, I, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a, a lead of the Linux Foundation. He said that we needed a new logo. <laughs> he's the guy who created our GitHub repo for us and everything. So it was very helpful. And he said, yeah, that, that they came from there and then we went from there. Um, but anyways, so, okay. So let's see, working towards next release. Uh, I think we should start thinking about a 1.0 something. I think they will help with our uh, people looking at us in a different light, uh, being the 0 0.1 currently what we have on the old repository even uh, is okay, but we've done so many changes and you can look at the, the roadmap file and see that we've worked a lot over the last, since that. Um, and I think we're kind of ready. Yes, it is a more or less a marketing move, but we need one. So, so yeah, there is two things uh, using and underneath I have also release planning, so we'll get back to that. But actually, let's 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 go there since I started. Um, so the one question is what do we want to uh, use this version? I propose some sort of one zero zero RC one. Manuel also said, hey, let, if we need a release, let's just do a zero two, right, Manuel, and then do a big bang on for KubeCon NA. And I really like that idea. I like that this uh, KubeCon NA November 17th deadline. Um, but then I think that we don't really need a 0 0.2 until then, it's just more work. What do you guys think? Um, I haven't done much software um, versioning. Um, yeah. Usually worked with the small, um, the minor bumps, but given that uh, the major release also marks um, backwards compatibility issues. And I don't know if we really are backwards compatible. Well, with the specification, it's different anyhow, right? We're not releasing a software product, but 
uh, in a way, something written in the current specification and the previous one, they are there is some mismatch. Or we yeah. dropped a few things. Yeah, there is a, some changes, um, definitely. So yeah, that's something to think about. I think what we have now is a lot closer to to something that I feel you know we should feel comfortable about having community actually use. The only big thing that that I need to work on and I've been working on is the retry and error definitions. I think currently they're they're kind of like the weak point of what we have uh, in many ways. So I've been I've been updating that a lot, but with that in, I feel fairly comfortable of saying hey and then maintaining what we have for the future as far as backwards compatibility goes. Um, I think we made a lot of uh, good changes in the last months. Um, but again, I think I, I really like Emmanuel, your idea for Qcode NA, the date. Um, another question that we come is right now we have two SDKs as well, which we didn't have for 0 0.1. Uh, the Java and the Go one, and there is also an issue for uh, open for uh, what is it? The Microsoft guys asked for the SDK, but I don't know about that. So what do we do? Uh, I think Cloud Events releases them separately, so the SDKs have their own releases uh, that may not really follow the specification releases. So, and even if the specification is on 1.0, let's say the SDKs have the right to have their own independent versioning as far as what they want to do. So I, I, maybe we'll do it that way or how you guys feel about that. The independent release makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's always going to be some, uh, kind of change or some like specific thing by tying it to the specification is gonna end up being a challenge. Yeah, sounds good. So let's- Could we that. solve that by minor release versions? Yeah, because, I think- um, or, or Could you give an example of the cloud events SDK uh, not following suit? Or they do denote their compatibility on the README page if yeah, you go to any cloud SDK. They have like a, a table, you know, a matrix of, you know, like this SDK version is compatible with this, this and that SDK. Uh, Normally okay. they, they have like, uh, the specification has, I don't know, five versions and uh, yeah, there's something yeah. regarding this. You know? Okay. I think, you know, very similar to this. As this lists only the uh, the cloud events SDK version, uh, the cloud events version. So compatibility with the specification version 0 0.3 and 1.0. I see the Go one because that's supposed to be the biggest one they have. They don't have oh, cloud event specification 0 0.3, 1. Point. Okay, so so their versioning seems independent and they release, but they just say, okay, which ones do you support? Yeah. So it's a major. Okay, yeah. we can do that. That that makes sense. That's a good idea. Okay, so we decided something for KubeCon NA and SDKs are independent. Um, good, I like that. Uh, right. A quick question, for yes. KubeCon are we, are we saying 1.0 release or, or is that still an open question? Like is it 0 0.2 or 1.0? I, I would prefer something with 1.0, maybe milestone or release candidate. So we'll have okay. to talk Go. about that. But let's discuss, keep discussing that. Is, is that okay, Manuel, to keep this in, in discussing this uh, in, in meetings and see, you know, if people have ideas for the next one and, and, and going forward. The version, I mean, what the version is, is not that bad. It's just we need something maybe a month before to, to come to an agreement so we can, because there is going to be some work on everybody um, to get that out. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention that it might be a good idea to have sort of a um, release time schedule. So if we want to go pump it to 1.0 that we leave maybe um, one community call that's two weeks or maybe two that makes it four weeks uh, for uh, bug fixes like a feature freeze, you know, and release candidate is a good idea. I think that release candidate one typically also includes the feature freeze. Um, but again, we're not doing software products, so I'm, I'm good with anything. Um, 
And then the idea was having it closer to KubeCon North America uh, would make it a nice marketing um, gag. Maybe, um, maybe we could even have a blog post, um, CNCF, I don't know. Um, Cloud Events had that. That would be nice, definitely, yes. Yeah, do, do we should probably engage, like if there are any marketing contacts that are provided by CNCF, just to make sure we talk through the GTM plan and um, talk through all these like channels that we can uh, get, get this announced through. Yeah, we really need, yeah, that we, we need more of like community engagement and stuff like that. So any help is much appreciated. So it wow. could also be in October. It doesn't need to be uh, that close to KubeCon North America. I was just wondering um, if we should really do it now, if now is the best time, or if we... You know, it's probably not worth making another version in between. So bumping yeah. it now or today to 0 0.2 and then going to 1.0 later. So maybe something in late September, beginning October would also be fitting, right? So if we have the release candidate now and then um, work with bug fixing towards the 1.0 big release, including all the marketing. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. We want to now go, uh, some of the things that changed since our last meeting, it wasn't much, it was a week of waking up super early in between for this conference and stuff. But uh, we did update the for each and parallel states. Um, and what I kind of just, this is a big PR, but I'll, I'll try to explain. And I think we did, we touched on this last meeting as well, but basically for each and parallel states had used to have a set of uh, nested states that define the control flow logic for uh, the parallel iterations. Remember both parallel and, and for each states uh, exec execute uh, in parallel, but the for each one, each of the quote unquote branches gets its own um, element of the iterating array where parallel states, uh, each of the branches get the whole uh, states data, the same copy of it. But anyways, uh, long story short, that, that, that was so ugly. I think that having nested in states inside branches of parallel state or for each state was too much, especially when we have the subflow state. Um, so what we changed is that instead of defining, and then you had also, sorry, rules like states inside of the branch cannot transition to states outside the, uh, uh, the branch and blah, blah, blah. So we simplified that where we just said, okay, look, for e if you want to execute control flow of logic uh, inside of each branch, you specify a workflow ID that maps to uh, a different workflow where you can do that. So for this case, you need multiple J uh, JSON or YAML files, but uh, for most probably usages for, for each in parallel states, we also added the ability to do actions instead of states. So, so that I think, is a good change because we would really, it drives kind of simplicity of, of these states a lot and does not really enforce some rules that are kind of silly, such as the transitioning and stuff like that. Anyways, for the event states, I did this and I hope, you know, it, we changed the on events action, uh, the events actions, which really never made any sense to me to just saying on events. Um, so basically, we are saying is um, the event states, uh, the on events defines uh, what events are you looking for and then what actions you're going to be executed depending on the events that are being consumed. So just a small change there. Um, okay, for switch state, and, you, and we can look, uh, allow transition or end the definition. So this was a big one that actually I'm glad we did is uh, switch states defines a, one or more conditions and each condition, if it evaluates to true, can have a transition to a different part of your workflow or, the, or different state. If none of the conditions match, you have the default property, uh, which uh, will then be the default transition, kind of like similar to XOR gateways that work in BPM2, for example. Um, one thing that we were missing is 
let's say if a condition matches, you want to stop workflow execution in this state, in that case, since we don't have an explicit end state, we will have to kind of users would have to add a state that's just an end state. Uh, so we change that where both in the condition um, expression uh, and in the default, you can either define a transition to a different state or you can define straight in there an end definition saying, okay, if, if uh, this we want actually to end workflow execution. So that was the, the motivation be, behind that. Um, and the last change that we did was for transition and end definitions. And in our transitions, you can actually produce an event. The same thing with end definitions. You can have a, a, a end, def, uh, end definition with a kind uh, produce event, but we only allowed the single reference. So there were cases that uh, actually Ricardo was working with one where he's saying, hey, dude, I want to produce multiple events here, not just one. And we looked at the specification and said, uh, we can't do that right now. So uh, we added that where it's now in an array of event references. So you can define on multiple um, events to be produced during those two constructs. So that's kind of like the, uh, what we have done. And just for my, if you guys know, like from our issues here, uh, the one that I'm currently uh, working on is this guy. Basically just updates uh, the retries and the on-air handling for specifically looking at timeouts. Right now we, we don't really have a clear understanding from what I've seen how, how that timeouts are re related to errors or retries. Uh, we kind of assume that that just happens, but <laughs> so updating that. And I think uh, Ricardo is also looking at this guy, which is he proposed, um, you know, additional parameters and how they're asked. And there was the uh, a Vang, uh, I think he's from Alibaba, and he pointed us to to some specification docs to see how we can they can help us out. I looked through that. I wasn't really Actually, go ahead. <laughs> What what he, uh, he he's asking for, you know, some uh, kind of uh, a specification or uh, uh, RFC to define uh, how we can classify the the parameters. Okay. Uh, I I I am assuming that he has the same problem on Alibaba. So uh, yeah, the the problem here is this: uh, we actually we discussed that on the on the last meeting, if I'm not wrong. And uh, we, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> stop saying sorry. Uh, no, uh, that's the, the uh, actually, to be honest, I, uh, I need to take a look on this uh, again and um, maybe formulate it a little bit more, um, you know, for others to understand what we are trying to achieve here. That is uh, having a classifier for the functions uh, in the parameters. So uh, users would like, oh, um, this, in this function, I, I'd like to send, uh, parameters this way you know um because if you if you think on functions maybe you can have a, a mean parameter a out parameter in and out parameter um, you know i remember my uh, when i i used to program the uh, sql procedures that you have like you know, classifiers for parameters actually um, it, it is not just uh input parameters but uh, uh, maybe you need to classify the the, the return you know so um, I, I, to be honest, I don't know how to tackle this. Uh, actually, I maybe I, I need to spend a little more time thinking about it and maybe consider adding a, a you know, uh, I don't know, a draft or a design doc of something that uh, we'd like to implement uh, with this pack. And then if, it would be nice to understand that if that would make sense or not. For this case particular, we are trying to achieve like um, a function that make make um, makes rest calls. So, um, for instance, I have parameters as input. Para uh, sorry, um, path parameters. I can have query string parameters. I can have body parameters, or I can send parameters as headers. And then, how can I express that intent uh, with, with the specification? Yeah, that's so, an important thing. 
Yeah, and then um, th that's that that's the the case. But to be honest, I don't know how to express that on the specs. But I know that I need that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'm sure. Sorry, guys. No problem. Okay. Um, hello. Oh. Other than this, can you? Uh, we have the the extension issues those are long term i haven't given much thought about either if anybody would like to uh, tackle those i'll be happy to um the dot net sdk uh that's something that we got asked for um, um by i think an ibm guy it's a good idea we just i don't think we have anybody currently that's proficient in dot net to tackle that, but it would be nice to have if you yeah, guys know. Actually, anything. actually, we don't have we, we don't have time uh, right now. Yeah. I, I at least I don't have. I, yeah. I would like to 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 grade this, but uh, right now I, I need actually to update this the Go SDK with the latest latest um, things yeah. on the spec and also add some you know features in there that I that I'm missing. Uh, I hope that I can get that uh, before we we release the the, the one of zero. That would be important. Yeah. The only other thing that I have that might we probably haven't looked at um, in the Java SDK, um, I, we also added the uh, validation. So not only can you build um, your workflows programmatically or parse them from the JSON or YAML. Let me find the section. Did I add this? Yes. You can also have workflow validation where we'll give you schema related uh, errors. So if you load up your JSON or YAML, it will straight up tell you, hey, this does not follow the schema. Um, or if you create your workflow either, or if everything par parses fine, it will, it will give you extra uh, kind of business errors. For example, hey, you don't have an end state and definition defined in a state, you, you have multiple start definitions defined and, 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 and stuff like that. So that, that, I think, can we do this in Go or I don't even know, I don't even, whatever, but it's just an idea of something to add it later. So yeah, we can do that. Okay. No problem. Okay. Um, let's go back. So that's kind of all I have. I mean, Manuel or anybody, you guys have any other things to bring up? don't have any additional issues, but I think maybe we should consider um, selecting what we want to get into the release and what we want to work on. So error handling, yes. Um, how about those extensions, the, the tracing extension? That's uh, Extensions always are independent from the main specification, aren't they? Yes, um, okay. the way we did them is they're complete separate. Um, JSON files and we have this extensions page here which currently we just have the the KPI extension um, and we should we can add them here independent and think of releases but maybe here we should still put down um, what versions they're compatible with but the way we kind of did this is they all reference uh, states uh, by ID or name. As long as we don't remove those two properties on states and workloads, we should be compatible to all, you know, many different versions in the future. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Um, we, I would like to have, hold on, I go to issues for the tracing one. And I think Ricardo linked the open telemetry spec. Um, it would be nice, you know, if we had uh, or work with uh, some, you know, somebody who, who, who is an expert in this area uh, to make sure that what we're doing is right. So I'll try, you know, maybe somebody, even a Red Hat, we can pull in and ask them, you know, if they can help us here. What do you think, Ricardo, maybe, or, or if you guys know anybody at, you know, your locations that... Yeah, maybe I, I, can, I, can, I can, I can, I don't know, uh, maybe guys from Prometheus team, they, they can have more, you know, experience on this. 
um, or uh, from a Jaeger, maybe we, yeah. we have both uh, people working on the, on those projects. Uh, so yeah, I guess maybe Jaeger. Um, I know a guy. His name is is uh, Jude C. Something like that. I, I can't recall exactly. But he lives in Germany, but he's Brazilian. Um, and he works in the Jaeger operator. I can you know I can talk with him. Uh, yeah, we got any help is much appreciated just to make okay. sure. I'll go, I'll, take, I'll talk with him. Cool, thank you. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Any questions? Anything is fine. <laughs> no, and, and for me. Okay. All right, in that case, I guess we're done and, and we'll have our other meeting in two weeks and, 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 and let's think about, you know, I guess the most important thing right now is the, <laughs> I guess the release and what we want to call them and we'll discuss that also next week. Um, uh, uh, if you would like to, I would like to, do, you know, get some more communication with the air handling and, and the timeouts. If you have interest in that, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to kind of do a like a community effort on that um, if possible. So we, we, we all kind of discuss what should maybe take a look. Their specification is an air handling section uh, that, that shows how to do on air and, and retry definitions um, and, and think about like how right now there is no correlation between a timeout, which is a date and time definition um, to uh, the way AWS does it is similar to what we have. Uh, however, they have specific technical errors. So on, on air, they define like if air name is timeout error or something like that. And we don't really have that. So that's the disconnect right now that um, a timeout definition should either itself define retries uh, or it should define air handling and not just be a timeout as far as value goes and then have the owner error and timeout separately. But I'll show examples and stuff as well when I, um, when I, when we tackle that. So yeah, if anybody would like to, to help out with that, that, that's a big thing, big help. And thank you guys for joining. I mean, really appreciate it. One quick question. The release planning, we just follow up on the issue, right? Make a chat on the issue. Okay. Okay. Or should we discuss on Slack how to move forward with the release candidate? And do you have a plan in mind? Um, which milestones should lead us to 1.0? Well, I mean, this is thing, like, I think I've created a 0 0.2 milestone just because <laughs> this was a long time ago uh, because that's what I thought we would do but we should probably update it here um, if you look at the readme now I think I mean the roadmap um, so this was our VO one release in the old repository and this is all the work we have done it's a lot of work we have done since then and we specify here even 0 0.2. At that time, when we didn't know because a lot of things changed. Like we got three, uh, we, we went through three different repositories since then. And, and with the project status uh, being now sandbox, I mean, some things have changed. But it would be nice, Manuel, if you want to update, you know, the versions once we decide. And then we can go maybe through everything that we have done. And, and I think everything should go in the next release. But you know, then no, sure. Um, what yeah. is going to be in should go in the next release. What I meant was um, the dates and like release candidate uh, locking feature. The this sort of path that leads us to one dot zero. We we can discuss on the issue. That's yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But but the big picture is is more or less like um, we need some sort of not only to show progress, uh, which we are doing uh, anyways, we're always progressing, but it's to show the community progress. And, and, and then what's the best way to do that? Um, I think it's as far as versioning goes to have some sort of major release. Um, I really, I wouldn't say this you know, if I didn't think that it was feasible at this point. Yeah, we're not perfect. And yeah, we're always going to have issues and grow. But finally, after a long time working on this, I really feel comfortable 
with small changes and updates where I can say, hey, this is actually very usable um, for the community and it's just allowing them to, to see the same, you know, and I think a major version is, is a big part of that. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys tell me this is not a monologue. Um, but I've seen yeah, anyways, I wouldn't want to download an SDK uh, version that um, goes yeah. on a specification that is still somewhat in the development branch and doesn't have a, a number on it. Well, yeah, specifically, and I'll go there with SDKs, um, and I think with Go is the same, and Ricardo, you can speak for it. But right now, since our version is a snapshot, uh, we, and I guess I'll put it on zero two already. Uh, we only release to the snapshot Maven repository. So once we put an actual release of the SDK will be also on the main yeah. uh, Maven central repos. And then it's, it, people will feel comfortable, like you said, manual to use it. That's right. Yeah. For Go, it is like, uh, when we re do a tag release, um, it is already on ready for others to use because uh, Go used like this GitHub um, way of uh, dependence management. So uh, you just say on your Go project that you'd like to use these um, projects from GitHub, and you specify a tag that you would, that you'd like to use, and that's it. Uh, Go will uh, download this, the the sources, and then you can do the stuff. So um, we'll be ready for that. Okay. We don't need All a right. third party, um, party repo like Nexus or Maven. Yeah. Okay, regarding the uh, anything else, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, Dan Cohn may, uh, merged my pull request on the landscape, uh, which changed the name of the project card in the landscape from serverless workflow specification to just serverless workflows. Oh, nice, nice. Um, yeah, I think that was also in the initial um, uh, proposal to the TOC and at, somewhere along the way it became serverless workflow specification because that was what we were doing that we didn't have SDKs back then, right? So. And um, yeah, okay, uh, I think we, uh, Michael, you joined us. Michael, are you there? I am, I am. Um, I've only just recently become aware of some of the stuff you guys are doing, so I just thought I would join to um, see some of the, the meeting comments and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, hi. That's nice, uh, welcome. Thank um, you. For attendance, do you wanna be associated with any company? Um, I can be. Oh, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, uh, yeah, you can put Morgan okay. Stanley. That's fine. Uh, pardon, I didn't catch that. Uh, which uh, company is it? Uh, Morgan Stanley. Oh. All right. So, do you have any concluding words for today's community call? Uh, no, I think I talked enough for you already. Yeah, right. But again, thank you guys for joining and, and in, see you guys in two weeks. And, and yeah, that's all. Thanks. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Ciao, guys. Bye.